think creative destruction is is incredibly it's a, an incredibly negative term. A wrecking ball or like blowing up a building. Creative destruction to me is cooking my roommate's room because it's a complete mess. Scientific people coming up with new creative ways to destroy one another. Government cutting funds in our schools to for funding of the arts. It's not it's not good. It's definitely not good at all. Well, that's not it exactly. Creative destruction happens when businesses find ways to do things better or cheaper and put others out of business. It's an economic fact of life. The car killed the horse and carriage, but it gave rise to a huge industry that today employs tens of millions worldwide. The Wright Brothers' primitive airplane created a huge industry but it also caused the loss of millions of jobs on passenger railroads, almost two million since the 1920s. Now, the typewriter was revolutionary when it first hit the scene in the 1800s. This little machine created millions of jobs, especially for women. It changed forever how businesses are run. But when the personal computer replaced the typewriter, the millions of people who made them, used them, or repaired them lost their jobs. So did that mean that there were fewer jobs? <laughs> no way. The personal computer created even more jobs, not only for the engineers and factory workers who made them, but the millions and millions of people who used them to create successful businesses like Facebook, Amazon, Google, YouTube, eBay, Groupon, <laughs> you name it. That's how destruction can be creative. It's the paradox of progress. So, should a new business be allowed to destroy an old business? Is there a role for government in all this? As a matter of fact, countries that have allowed new business to replace old ones have grown more productive and richer. On the other hand, countries with laws and rules to protect obsolete businesses have fallen behind. People see the benefits of new and better products Shorter work weeks, better jobs, and higher living standards, all caused by creative destruction. Most creative destruction was caused by inventors and entrepreneurs. Fred Smith had what most everyone thought was a wacko idea, to deliver mail and packages door to door by plane overnight. In order to make his idea work, he'd need to think way outside the box. He'd need his own airplanes and an entirely new way of routing them. He'd have to muscle the primitive computers of the day into doing things that had never been done before. He started FedEx in 1971 with just 14 planes. And today, FedEx has the fourth largest fleet of airplanes on Earth. It's a $39 billion a year company. Today, FedEx is the largest single employer at its headquarters in Memphis, Tennessee. Welcome to a brain meets brawn world where almost anything goes. 50, 40, 30. Immense air freighters weighing three quarters of a million pounds. Hey, landing check, ten last fleet here. Not a green. Small cities built just to move air cargo. Computers, electronics, fruits and vegetables and animals of every stripe and color. Everything moves by air. And at the heart of it all, the jumbo jet. Technological icon for the age of a shrinking planet in almost perpetual motion. In Memphis, every night of the year at precisely 10.16 p.m., the action begins. It's showtime at the FedEx Superhub. The biggest and busiest cargo airport in the world. A small city of 10,000 souls hustles without pause to the beat of the clock. With over 650 aircraft, FedEx operates the largest cargo airline in the world. Sorry, was it 1362? Yeah, FedEx 1300. Welcome back, parking gates. 1307, aircraft 213. This is the company that brought you overnight door-to-door -door delivery and created an industry. It changed air freight from a rare event to an everyday occurrence. 
12.10 a.m., Mike Fox's offloading crew is ready and waiting at gate 260 when FedEx Flight 1330 arrives from Philadelphia. Basically, my offload team consists of 16 people. Everyone will be in place. As soon as the beacon goes off, it's clear to go inside the silhouette, and we'll attack the aircraft. As soon as we get the door open, we try to get the freight out as quick as possible in a safe manner. No one, no two man can do this. You have to have everybody working at the same time to get something done. When you're dealing with something this large, uh, if you don't have teamwork, it's going to fall apart. Across the vast terminal, almost 50 crews will offload tonight's arrivals. They empty each plane in less than 20 minutes. All right, take it up. There's never a boring moment. It's always highly physical. Employees out there are what we consider industrial athletes. They're out doing a job, performing at high levels. If you can't handle physical work, don't even come out here. In just six hours, cargo from every plane is completely unloaded, sorted, reloaded, and sent back into the night. We're not done offloading yet. Don't give me two minutes, give me two minutes. Okay. 12.45 a.m., the last train from Flight 1330 rushes to one of six offloading lines. Small documents and packages on top, regular packages in the middle, and overweights on the bottom. Regular packages from all six lines are routed into the Matrix. Twelve fifty a.m., the Matrix is in full swing. The packages are faced, labeled up, and sent into the conveyor ladder. They're automatically sorted by destination. The matrix is an area where the packages are sent to be assigned to AS lines, which dump them to primary feed lines, which actually go to the secondary runouts, which go to the slide areas. That's how complicated the equipment is. Nearly one million documents pass through the SPSS each night. From here, they fly through chutes, into bags, and onto the loading ramps. In the Global Operations Center, specialists manage one of the largest civilian networks of satellites and computers on the planet. The actual movement or in-flight activity and flight monitoring of aircraft takes place here. We also create flight plans for the pilots. We communicate weather to them, and we also uh, communicate uh, contingencies in the event that there is some type of disaster worldwide. My goal is to make sure that every plane leaves on time and make sure that every customer's package moves. FedEx is driven by information. Packages in the system can be scanned at 12 points. Scanning 3 million packages 12 times each produces a lot of data. But it's the way FedEx knows exactly how many packages are being processed every night and exactly where each piece is at any moment. Meanwhile, in the pilot ready room, over 300 pilots go through their pre-flight briefing. Close to 150 crews are preparing to depart. They're doing the required paperwork to uh, prepare for the flight, weather, destinations, alternates, and things like that. After the pre-flight briefing, pilots take shuttle buses to the waiting planes. 1.30 a.m. Ramp 334, the plane for Boston. Oh! Oh! FedEx crews load more than 130 planes in just over 90 minutes. In the FedEx tower, controllers orchestrate the outbound ballet. At 2.18 a.m., right on schedule, the first freighter screams down the runway. For the finale, nine jets depart every six minutes. At 4.30 a.m., the last scheduled departure is airborne. See this? I just got this overnight. Via FedEx, of course. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Some people say the smartphone has just started down its path of creative destruction. 
It's certainly not just a phone anymore. <laughs> it does all kinds of things other devices used to do. It's driven down the sales of small digital cameras, wristwatches, portable GPS units, paper maps, uh, portable game consoles, and even iPods. But by the time you see this video, this phone will be old technology too. So what about creative destruction, this paradox of progress? Should the government have banned the computer to protect jobs in the typewriter industry? Do you think government should limit what we can do on our smartphones to protect digital camera and GPS manufacturers that are losing so much business? Considering the results, creative destruction isn't about losing jobs, it's about trading old ones for new ones. Pretty good idea, huh?